a very big good morning to you all. You're probably all logging on this morning to this webinar thinking, ah, why have we got Barbara this morning and not um, our leading lady, Sarah? Well, Sarah will be coming on uh, shortly. She's just been slightly delayed this morning. So um, just good morning to everybody. And for anybody who doesn't uh, know me, um, I'm Barbara and I'm Barbara Hallwood and I work as brand ambassador for Cleek 100 Club. Um, I actually, a year ago, well, sold out my business, which was the Profile Club, to Cleek Events. Um, and so Sarah has now been very successfully, I'd like to say, uh, running the club for the past year. Um, it was quite an, I'd had this private members club, the Profile Club, for eight years, and Sarah and I met at the big Cleek Boodles event, the tennis event, which seems a different world um, when you think now of how, how our events don't happen. Um, Sarah and I met, she loved the idea of a private members club. I was at the point in my life, somewhat older than Sarah, uh, looking to do a little bit more traveling, um, not spend quite as much time on the profile club. Um, I also had another business marketing profile, which I still have and I do marketing PR and events. Um, so basically I sold out to Sarah, Sarah, uh, or to Matt, should I say, Matt Haycox, and Sarah is business development director and has been running the club ever since, absolutely amazingly. So. Um, the club is very much made up of top level business directors, um, senior professionals, um, each club, one is based in Manchester, one is based in Leeds, we cap it at 100 members each, um, each club, which I think really helps to make it exclusive. Um, in, norm in the normal world, pre-COVID, we do a lot of bespoke events um, and the club really prides itself in that. Now, Sarah has done a fabulous job in these really challenging times since May, sorry, since March, should I say, um, bringing together people in very small groups, um, taking direction from all the government restrictions, um, bringing together a lot of uh, private dining events for just say six people. We did a couple of months ago, um, four groups of six around Manchester, but really trying to engage um, with individuals and bring people together where they can really benefit from business. So. Uh, she's done a great job with that. There's a fabulous video and I would really encourage you to have a look on uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, um, have a look on Sarah's profile and see the video of all that's been going on for the past six months and um, she's done a great job. Uh, Club very much also focuses on those one-to-one -one introductions and even though we can't sit together now, have a glass of wine, um, we can bring you together via email. So please get in touch with Sarah um, if there's somebody particularly in the club that you'd like to contact. Uh, now, you might say, well, who's in the club? Well, that's because it's a members club. We don't obviously distribute the names, etc. But what Sarah is doing at the moment is putting together um, a separate section on the website, a members area, which is uh, password protected, where you'll be able to go on and have a look at the sort of people who are in the club. Um, so basically, we will use uh, the LinkedIn profiles only if approved by the individuals. But it would be a great way for you to see the sectors that are represented and to go on there. And um, if you want to contact anybody specific, then that's a great way to do it. So 2020 has not been the most um, fabulous year for any of us, I know. But it's great to see the club um, doing so well and a lot of new people coming on board as the Manchester and the Leeds Club both grow. Um, so here is our leading lady now taking over. Now, I've obviously talked all about her. Um, she's coming on. Uh, to join us, I think. Morning, Sarah. Good morning. Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> um, I've been going through my difficulties this morning, but here I am. Hi, Chris. Well, I've talked you. all about you, Sarah, so it's been absolutely fine because I've just been talking about what a uh, great job you've been doing with the club and explaining to people why it was an older version this morning as opposed to you and that you'd be joining us. So <laughs> I've just talked really about it and highlighted um, the great video that you've done recently, which... Um, encouraging people to have a look on LinkedIn there at what's available. So I think we're now, I don't know if there's anything that you particularly want to add, Sarah, before we uh, introduce Chris. Uh, no, I mean, I will talk about some of the stuff we've got planned at the very end. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know who has seen, if any of you, on, I'm just going to go to the participants now so I can see who's on this morning. Um, 
oh hi good morning everybody yeah so a so few of you will have seen Chris before speak for us and know how wonderful he is um, and how helpful he is so I guess we wanted to welcome you back Chris um, to get more very valuable information for um, building your brand online um, and all the strategies and stuff so I know you've helped some other members already um, and certainly helped myself with the my personal and my business um, with the clique and stuff Instagram so really looking forward to hearing what you've got to say to us all this morning um, and then yeah thanks Barbara for making the introduction in my absence. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yeah, so I mean, I've got loads of different stuff that um, I can cover. Now, I've got a, a few slides that I'll share as I did before. They're different, um, it's a different presentation altogether. Um, have you got any other stuff that you want to go through before beforehand, or do you just want me to crack straight off? No, Chris, you can start. That's fine. I'll speak at the end. Okay, cool. So, uh, what I'll do is if I would you be able to just make me host temporarily so I could share oh, my yeah, screen? Perfect. Okie dokie. Cool. So, um, just nod your head for me. Can you see my screen? Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. So, um, thank you very much for the invite again. And I, I really, really enjoyed the first time that we, um, we did this, right? I watched the YouTube video only a couple of days ago again, just to kind of, kind of rejig my memory of what I covered because I speak on so many of these different things now. And the one presentation I did for you guys was quite exclusive the first time. And this is again, completely brand new I've not delivered this presentation to anybody and what I've really tried to do in here is, is focus in on a new framework and methodology that we that we teach inside our business at the moment and also do for clients and it's all around actually being able to put significant return on investment metrics behind your personal brand so I'm going to be talking to you about the fundamentals and foundations that you need to put in place, both from a personal branding perspective and a business branding perspective to help basically you take advantage of the opportunity that, that's on social media right now. Now, I know a lot of you may know my background, so I'll kind of breeze over it um, in a couple of slides time. But for those of you that aren't connected with me, if you ever want to get in contact with me after this, um, just by any questions or anything like that that you've got, then all my main social media and connection channels are there. So a bespoke email address of chrisTaylorOnline.com is there for you, LinkedIn and Instagram. Come and connect with me. I answer every single question that comes my way. So I'm always here to be able to help you even after um, this sort of uh, presentation that I'm going to give. So for me, there's a lot of talk about personal branding right now. It's, it's a huge topic that I think every Tom, Dick or Harry seems to be a personal branding coach at the moment. And for me, it's such an important topic, but I don't like talking about it in the same way that everyone else does, because it seems to be that quite simply, everyone seems to be copying each other. And actually, they're talking about the wrong thing. And I've recently watched, and it kind of did trigger this whole presentation, actually. I don't know if anyone's seen it. Um, let me know in the comments if you have. But there's a, there's a documentary on Netflix called The Social Dilemma. And it talks about the, the control that these social media platforms have and the fact that actually we have no control over who sees our content, who actually watches any of our stuff. The social media platform does all of that for us. All we can do is post and hope for the best. And a lot of people got scared by that and they ended up turning their notifications off. They ended up hiding away from social, having this detox, which I think is great. But my mind works completely differently to everybody else's. I was starting to think about the different ways that I can leverage that and hack that to be able to actually take some control back. Because for those of you that have followed me for a little while, or for those of you that haven't, uh, it's about six to eight weeks ago, I lost access to a 38,000 follower Instagram account. And that was 38,000 people that I built connections up with over a three year period of literally dedicating my life to this but I lost access completely over a couple of mean individuals just reporting my account over and over and over again. And suddenly I had no access to any of those people. Instagram delete the account, they take it away from me. And you literally are left with nothing. And for me, a lot of businesses right now are extremely vulnerable to this. And what I really want to do is try and change the way that people perceive it, because don't get me wrong, social media is a massive opportunity, but it's, an opportunity that we go in of and out of depending on whatever platform our target market's on with a specific focus of con literally collecting data that is all social media is for us it's an ability to be able to get attention onto who we are as people and businesses collect the data and we need to move that into a place where we can ultimately take control 
So if anything happens in terms of we get hacked, which is happening a lot right now, and uh, we lose access to an account through the thing that happens to me, or potentially you just get bored of building a brand on one platform and suddenly a TikTok comes along and takes over the whole world and suddenly all the other platforms become irrelevant for a short time being. What we want to do is create a diverse brand which is available everywhere, which is consistently growing, but is protected by the fact that we control the asset. We can control who sees our content at any one point. Because when you build a personal brand is one thing, but what you then do with it it's a completely different question altogether. So again, this presentation is built to go through the fundamentals of building that brand, but then ultimately thinking about how you can then turn that into something that's actually going to be a benefit to you and your business. Because a lot of people spend hours and hours and hours like creating brands on social, but then they call it a brand, but actually it's a following. And there's a big, big difference. There's a subtle difference, but the difference between building a following and building a brand. And this is where this little kind of, I guess, message that I'm trying to do is so strong because when you can take a following on Instagram or a following on LinkedIn and a following on YouTube and go, come and follow me over on this platform here and people listen, that's a brand. That's a message that people are bought into. But when you've just got 38,000 Instagram followers that actually don't do anything that you say, you've got a following on a platform and actually that's actually quite useless to you because they're not bought into you in your message. So this is the distinguishment that you're going to get. And when I first started this, I didn't know, like this is stuff that I've learned as I've gone through, but there was two main reasons. And I think I mentioned this on my previous and why I went into focusing in on me as a person and building my brand rather than my businesses. And number one, I, I found it a lot easier to monetize. So these sorts of results came solely from, my personal brand. I mean, Sarah's mentioned my business name once, I think, on that email of Instagrammatic. But if that email hadn't gone out, you may not have even been able to find out what my business name was. For me, like, it's made no difference. I've actually struggled to come up with a business name because I can't, and I haven't really been able to work out what it is that I do. That's been my biggest thing I've been trying to work out. It's, it's all come down to brand building, ultimately. But I have never needed a business name because people buy into my philosophy and me. And that's actually become an issue now because there's only one of me. And now you've got to try and distinguish out. And that's something I've been working through for the last 18 months. But when I first started, these sorts of results kind of hooked me in. And when I started to see them, it made me realize that actually to make money, you don't need a business brand. To build a business, you need a business brand. And that's where that subtle difference makes, makes a big change. And the other reason was the opportunities that being known does to you. Now, I, I looked at this very, very closely um, when I first started doing this. All the people that I admired, all the people that I looked at and put up on a pedestal and said, I want to be like them one day. I looked at the likes of a, an Elon Musk, a Gary Vaynerchuk, people that I'm going to talk about in this presentation all the way through. And yes, they've got businesses, but they've also been able to make themselves known as strong personal brands in their, in their industries they actually get people to listen because when you're in a, a place where you're trying to make a change to the everyday norm of what everyone else is talking about, it's quite difficult to do that behind a business these days, unless you're going to pump a lot of money behind advertising, getting that message out. Whereas when you're an individual, it becomes a lot easier to be able to push that message far and wide because people are more likely to interact with you as the individual than they are as the logo that appears. And for me, that made so much more sense because there's so many different things that I can do personally, which helps propel my business forward. And they were the reasons that I kind of went in. Now I'm going to breeze brief through this. Like this all started for me because I had an addiction. Um, I think I don't know if I mentioned this before, but that's the figure that stands out for me. Like above anything else, that's the figure. That's the amount of time in minutes that people spend on their phones, on social media every single day. Now, I was one of the people that was scrolling through news feeds for that 174, new, 174 minutes, stalking every single person I could possibly get hold of, right? I have all my friends, all my family, all the businesses that I loved, all the influencers that I loved. I was literally wasting three hours of my day. Bearing in mind, I'm normally up for 10 to 12 hours, I say that, whatever that is, eight hours for sleep. So you, you're losing a large proportion of your day scrolling. And that for me was a, a bit of a wake up call. I snapped, I switched, I decided to become a creator rather than a consumer. And that's something that we're going to talk about a lot as we move through this. 
Because for me, the opportunity right now when it comes to getting yourself out there, especially when there are more people on social media right now than ever before, there's, there's more time being spent on social media than ever before. And if you can make that subtle switch to just telling your story online as you go through really simply, one, it becomes quite cool to see the progress that you make. I always like to look back and go, I can't believe that was what I was doing two years ago. But it's also a great way to demonstrate credibility. Now, there is a saying that comes alongside personal branding. It's the thing that makes it so powerful. It's the no like, trust, and transact model. And the more people know you, the more they like you, the more they trust you, the more they will do business with you. The only way that you can do that online is by opening up and getting yourself out there, letting people know who you are, what you're about, and how you can help them. The biggest thing that I want to stop people doing is wasting time on these platforms. Like, I have pointless photos and pointless selfies that I see of people thinking that they're creating social media content and they've been told to do it, so they're going out there and doing it, but it has no relevance to their business. It has no actual benefit to them doing it. It's actually a massive time-wasting exercise. We want to align you with the best way of moving forward possible, and that is by, yes, telling your story, but aligning it with what message and what mission your business is on to be able to actually make monetizable progress as we, as we go through this. Now, there's five steps that I, that I like to break down. And again, you would have seen my roadmap. This arrow follows me everywhere in every single presentation because it's the best way that I love to teach, right? The first step that we're going to go through is clarity. Then we're going to go through creating specifically how to then monetize off the back of it. We're going to talk about consistency and the models that we actually have to do. And the common questions I get asked around frequency, volume, to actually make a difference when it comes to building your brand. We're going to be talking about communication and then we're going to be talking about collaborations. This for me is the fundamental framework of what we apply to the people that we work with and, the, and me personally to be able to take someone from not being known to being a thought leader in their industry where they can actually generate a monetizable return off the back end of it. But before you can actually go into talking about money, you need to understand this first step and it's getting completely clear on what it is that you want to be known for. And I start this with everything, whether I'm talking about social media, whether I'm talking about business, whether I'm talking about scale, whatever it is I talk about, this bit of advice completely changed the game for me in terms of the way that I scaled my property business at the start and now my brand building agency as we go. It's just that the more people that know what you do, the more opportunity will come your way. Now, we're online on a networking event on like right here, right? Now, you've got nine or 10 names that are appearing in this chat. Now, people from the outside may not know who these are, but that's the benefit of being part of this membership, being a part of this club. But how many inside this group actually know what you do right now? I'm hoping it's all of them. If not, take names of the names that you don't know what they do and go and find out, because I guarantee they're probably thinking the same thing. You need to take advantage of every networking opportunity that you get to be able to understand that the more people that know how you can help them, the more opportunity is going to come your way. Because social media really is just the biggest form of word of mouth referral marketing out there. That's all it is. Right? And people think about it as paid advertising and all these weird and wonderful strategies. Technically, all it is, because people are checking you out everywhere online, it's just a, an easier way and a quicker way, because that's all we're looking to do here, actually, isn't it? Shortcut time to success is an easier way for you to generate more word of mouth referrals. That's what I love about it. And there's two things that you need to become completely clear on. And you need to make sure that your profiles are actually saying this to the people that you're trying to reach. Number one is what do you want to be known for? So take it then a look at the profiles that you've got, your YouTube channel, your LinkedIn account, your Facebook group, your Instagram profile, your TikTok account, and actually looking at it and going, does that actually say what me as an individual actually does and what my business stands for? If it doesn't, that then needs to change. The second thing you then need to do, and this needs to be aligned with your personal branding message, is what your offer is actually going to be. The first step to monetizing from social, monetizing the traffic and the awareness that you generate, is actually talking about the products and services that you deliver and the results that you can get on the platforms. Like People would rather post a photo of them drinking coffee and having breakfast in a fancy restaurant than they are actually talking about what they're doing that day to help a client move forward. 
what they're actually doing that day to get their product further into a bigger distribution network. Like, for me, this is an awareness campaign. This is all it is. It's an attention grabbing campaign. It's going to move people from the bracket where they have no idea who you are into a bracket where they want to work with you because they know you. They know you're the thought leader in your industry. They know you're the go-to person. And the clarity aspect for me is the foundations to it. Because when you are clear on that message, when you detail what that message is, and I did a post on this this morning and it's gone a bit mental. My phone's still pinging off as I'm talking right now. But it's all around the one thing that we all need in our lives to be able to actually make this whole personal branding thing work. And it goes alongside every single big influential person there is out there right now from your traditional startup through to a Donald Trump who's just lost the presidency presidency in the U S right. There's confidence. Like you need to be 100% confident in the message that you're trying to deliver. And I've got a couple of examples of people that do this. And when you have this, the, the, the compelling message that you've got to deliver will land with people. I used to be this awkward, timid guy that used to really shake when doing videos online. And I was wondering why it never connected with people. And the problem you've got when you are in that position, and there's ways to train out of this, by the way, this takes practice. It takes a bit of time to get into. But when you have a message that you are that hungry about to deliver, when you have a product that you know can help people, that's the point at which you can then start to leverage message and actually want to create um if you don't know who he is is a guy called tony robbins he is one of the biggest if not he is a very tall man in general but he is the biggest influential person when it comes to personal development right now you watch one of his videos and tell me that he isn't confident like he embodies confidence unlike anybody else you may not know who this lady is. It's a lady called Sarah Blakely. She is a billionaire, the founder of Spanx, the company Spanx. Now you watch her talk, you watch her brand. Her brand, her business brand was built from the confidence that she had in the product and service that she was creating, that it was better than everywhere else in the market. So wherever she went, wherever, whatever room that she walked into, whatever video or interview that she was doing, she didn't have to worry about the message she was conveying because it was literally brought in. She had complete clarity on what that message was that she was trying to deliver. And that confidence is so like, it just transfers. The energy completely transfers onto people. And if you look at just the, the top five people that you watch every day, they will embody this level of confidence that we all need to be able to move. This guy, I mean, you go from confidence to cocky and arrogant very, very quickly, don't you? But ultimately that's all opinionated and that's all that's all what Gary Vaynerchuk is about again embodying you watch any of these people's videos yes they're very americanized and there's a british way of doing this but when you believe so strongly jp i know you're one i watch a load of your stuff that is like the one of the best examples in this group that i can that i can highlight right this a message that's so down to the core a story that's so compelling and so strong which people buy into oprah winfrey is another one she had such a powerful story, but she was so confident in herself and her ability to succeed, she went out there and did it. Same with Elon Musk, probably one of the most controversial characters out there in the world right now, calling um, bullshit and all the coronavirus testing that's going on. However, um, he's confident in his, in his message and his delivery. Because before you move on to the creative strategy, uh, there's no point creating. There really isn't. It will take you 10 times as much longer unless you are completely clear on the message that you want to deliver online and you're 100% confident in its ability to be able to deliver results for people. When you break down the DNA of what's in all of these people that we know, like, trust, and love online, confidence is the thing that it comes back to. And I know that's weird to talk about when it comes to monetizing on social media, but it's very, very difficult, and you'll be making things 20 times as hard for yourself if you're not clear on your offer, you're not clear on what you do, your profiles and then not communicating that with complete and utter confidence and conviction, because that's where things start to really make the magic. And that's where things started to take the change from me. Like if I'd have come on here today and kind of just read every word on the slide and started to talk about my favorite heroes online and the right stuff, so, and they, I mean, it's probably not going to hit as hard if I come at it with conviction, with energy, with confidence to make you pay attention to this stuff because I know it works. I know it does. These people have proven aspects of it. 
I'm proven aspects that it works. Confidence will only come from clarity. So make sure before you move on to anything else, you do not skip these sections. Now, when you do, you can start to create the thing that everybody seems to panic over, but actually is the most simplest aspect. So I'm going to break it down for you to really make this clear and simple on the message that you should be looking to deliver. Now, there are seven key social media platforms. I've left the communication ones off like WhatsApp and Messenger. There are seven channels that people tend to focus on right now. And I mean, if I was going to really start again in any industry uh, right now, there, there's three places where I pay attention. And again, I'd like you to have a think to yourself because it is slightly different, but there's three platforms which I would go all in on. And there's a couple of them which I wouldn't touch with a barge pole. And there's one which is like, it's great, but it's just not quite there for organic um, brand building right now. Remember, this is organic. We're not talking about paid advertising here. We're building so focusing solely on creating content that we're not going to pay to play. We're going to put out there and just hope for the world that the, the world see it. The first one's Instagram, um, purely because of the way that the algorithm works. LinkedIn for me is my favorite right now. Um, bearing in mind, I, I'm known for the, being the Instagram person. It's actually my third favorite platform right now. Um, LinkedIn and YouTube are my two favorite platforms I am going 100% all in on. And I'll give you the reasons why. LinkedIn, at this current moment, I'm posting between five to seven times a day. And people look at that normally, look at me and they go, oh, it's quite a lot. But actually, all I'm doing is short, sharp, little bits of information to people because volume wins on that platform. Um, as long as you're talking, because everything that we create specifically talks to the target market in the way that we want to convey. And you just got to go look at my LinkedIn profile to be able to see this. But I would literally, if I take over somebody's account right now to manage, I'm creating them five to 10 bits of content on LinkedIn per day. I'm getting them to do two YouTube videos a week. And I'm then re-leveraging and repurposing that content onto Instagram. And believe it or not, purely um, for the fact that it is growing so much fast. And I said to myself, I'd never ignore a growing platform right now. The 14-year-old and 15-year-old platform known as TikTok um, <laughs> that everyone keeps saying. Now, um, we've just landed, and this is the most ridiculous thing to say, uh, but we've just ran landing a 25 grand contract off the back of someone reaching out to me on TikTok. Re Ridiculous. Like the fact that I used to think I was creating plat like content for that platform for no reason. If you go and watch my content over on TikTok right now, it is literally very similar to this. Cap images of my presentations, it's me talking, it's me delivering a message, talking to businesses that want to leverage branding. And there was just one guy that was on there scrolling and he ended up being one of the directors of the company that, that we ended up doing business with. And he just saw it very, very randomly, me delivering that talk. He reached out and said, we'd be able to have a chat. Um, two months later, we've just signed that contract. And that's come from a platform now that I can no longer ignore. It's it playing serious game in terms of the way that you can build a brand on there. You've just got to make sure that you're speaking about your message. It's not about doing silly dances. It's about focusing in on what you want to deliver. You've got to think about it. Like TikTok's a long game. It's not a short game. Like these people, if the average user is 14 and 15, guess what? These people grow up. And when they grow up, they are going to potentially need your product and service. And if you're thinking of being around in five to 10 years time, then why not leverage the long-term play, which is TikTok? Just a little friend of mine. I love Facebook. Um, I think it's great. And I do a lot of pay to play on Facebook um, right now. So I do my paid advertising through it. It's the best one out there. Um, YouTube is obviously owned by Google. It's the biggest video search engine out there. If you're not on it, again, think about the message that you want to deliver and use YouTube as the thing that you create for and repurpose outwards for the rest of the content. That would be my plan anyway. Twitter and Snapchat, I've just got no time for. Um, Twitter is a good platform for like PR and industry reporting and all that sort of thing. And I do use it, but it's not got the attention that the others do. I mean, it's something that when I want to go and moan about something, I'll, um, I'll hop onto that platform and go and do it, right? Now, to keep things simple, all you need to think about and draw out is who is the person you're actually trying to help? And I'm not talking about, oh, I'm looking to try and help uh, naught to £250,000 a year businesses that are looking for generic marketing help. Like that's not what I'm talking about here at all. You need to really dig deep into who it is that you're trying to talk to. 
you need to be creating content as if you are talking to one individual. And that for me was the best bit of advice I ever got was I look to target small to medium. So again, any CEO, any CFO, CMO, whatever fits the, the C-suite market, the chief exec market, the want to be thought leaders in their industry, but have no idea how. I create my content on LinkedIn, speaking directly to that individual. Because I know the people in those positions, they've got egos just like everybody else in the world. And if they can be seen as a thought leader in their industry via the strategies and the methodologies that we teach, then that's going to help them move forward either in their careers or taking their businesses further. So I create content that talks directly to that person. Guess what? It then gets listened to by others and they still get the same message. But I talk to that individual in that video, in that bit of writing, like I'm talking one-to-one to them. Talking to the micro is how you generate engagement from that. Because as much as I've spoken about it throughout this presentation, I actually can't stand social media. Like I think it's poison in terms of the way that it works. However, I'm a business person that looks to take advantage of opportunities that's out there. And I actually don't care what platform that I use as long as I can get attention. It's as simple as that. Like I used to be an Instagram person. People still see me as it. But as soon as they have one conversation with me, I let them believe I am when they first meet me. That's fine. If that gets people through the door, because I know the message that I've got is so much more than that. And all I need to do is have one conversation with someone to get them to realize the potential of applying this methodology and these principles. Like, I think I spoke about this briefly in the other ties, but a lot of people then ask me at this point, it's like, okay, well, you told me to create content, but I don't really know what to create content on. So I'm just going to breeze through them. There's eight types that I cover. And you can take a screenshot of them. Again, if you want to go watch the previous presentation on YouTube, I break these down in more, in more detail for you. But the ones that I love to focus on right now, especially in this kind of like tiptoe around world that people have around controversial and newsjacking messaging, I like to stir it up a little bit right now. Like this is a big, big opportunity to look at the news, look at the industries that you're in and start providing your opinions on what's going on and what you believe. For me, people ask me, what is the quickest way to become a thought leader to actually be able to generate monetizable results from this platform? It's by standing out by giving your opinion on some controversial and news related topics. This is where I spend a lot of my attention right now. Like I just did a a video yesterday, I think it goes live on my YouTube channel, I think in about a couple of days time, but it breaks down how Donald Trump lost the presidency via marketing. And it talks about the mistakes that I believe he made going back through his campaign and what actually Joe Biden did much better than anyone else did in that, in that campaign running up to it. It's trending, it's newsworthy, but actually it's very strategically done because it's educating people into how they can get to that sort of position and, and how someone can leverage social in such a way to be able to get the presidency by the way like people think it's a political battle the presidency was not a political battle it was who was the best marketer throughout that whole period of time and this is what the power of talking about slightly controversial and slightly news related topics do so that's where i'm focusing a lot of my time if you're not in that arena focus in on the educational and the wins and successes i think You talking about the results that you're generating online for people right now is naturally going to encourage more people to reach out to you. I always say to people, you should be looking to create at least one wins to success post per week, which is going to enable you to be able to showcase that your product and your service delivers results. And guess what? If you've not got a paying customer that you can talk about for that win and success, go and find someone that needs your help And in a time where everybody needs more help than ever, go and deliver it for them for free and get the testimony on case studies. So at least you can see that you can still deliver that result. You can still deliver that success because that story that you can then pick up and tell people from that will be worth way more than the first level of retainment that you take of that next client because it will bring you five to six times more. I'm not an advocate of working for free, but if you've not got the wins and success stories behind you, then go and find two or three that you can then rinse and repeat in your content, which showcases that you can deliver results for people and your product delivers a result to people. The third step that we then go into is consistency. So I want to make this really, really clear here. The way that social works, to be able to generate 
cash from this, to be able to generate prospects into your business, you just need to keep saying to yourself that you are just one post away. Because there's a, one example here in the fashion industry, right? Of a lady that literally back in March of last year um, was getting 145 likes on a, on a photo. She had around about 2,000 followers. Now she committed, if you go back and you can have a look at the analytics of this, just on Instagram, didn't use any other platform. But she just committed to post every single day the stuff that she loves to wear, the, the style that she goes for. And within a period, this was taken three days ago, I think it is. She's now got, I think, 90,000 followers and her engagement rates up at around about 6,000 likes. Right? Okay, I don't like likes as a metric, but it's the easy one to demonstrate this. Now, the difference, because we know this lady, we, we worked a little bit with her at the beginning when she was completely broke on this left-hand side photo. She's now doing modeling work and work, consultancy work and fashion work for the likes of Zara, Topshop. I can't remember the third one's got out my name, but Zara and Topshop, basically doing this sort of modeling work with the cameras, yes. But you can see, <clears throat> if you go to her profile, Emily M's Wells, her name is, is Emily Wells, go to her profile online, she doesn't show her face anymore in any of her photos. She literally shows the, shows the clothing. And I know this is different because it's in a different industry to a lot of you that you're in. But this just shows the fact that in a matter of 18 months of consistently showing up every day, the amount of attention that you can earn if you deliver your core message and your value every single day without fail. Because this is the sort of growth that she saw. We tracked her right from the beginning. This just shows back to July. But she had 40,000 followers back in June. She's now got 90. So she's grown 50,000 followers, 50,000 people looking at her content every day in literally a matter of six months. Consistently posting, consistently posting, getting nowhere, getting absolutely nowhere, feeling like this didn't work. And then one post landed and suddenly all this attention comes your way. One reshare from a company that you're working with that's slightly larger than you. One shout out from an influencer that's suddenly in your niche and wants to help you. Just one thing can completely transform the way that you'll generate attention and prospects for your business. This is all you need. And for me, it's not rocket science. It's so, so simple. It's just applying and talking about the message that you believe in. So when you do go, as the term says, viral, you're going viral delivering the right message. There's nothing worse than going and flipping trending everywhere online and you're talking about the food that you ate this morning rather than the business you're actually running. Like be specific, be strategic in the way that you do it. Now I'm just gonna run through some of the most commonly asked questions that I get around consistency and content. Number one is how often should you be posting per day? My answer to that is always as much as you possibly can but making sure that it's in line with the message you're trying to deliver, in line with the products and services that you're creating and making sure that you have a call to action at the end of every single post. Like making sure that you're asking people to engage, making sure that you're asking people to go and check out another social media channel. That call to action is so important. Right now, bearing in mind, my job is to create. Like I have a team that um, we outsource all our work to. They're, they're, they're employed by us, but we outsource all of our work to. And my job is to create and to distribute my message. So we're creating anything between 30 to 40 different bits of content per day. Now that isn't obtainable by most people. So all I say to you is just commit to showing up on the key platforms where your target market are once per day. Going back and looking at that content themes page and going, okay, I just need an hour just to make a plan out of what's going on in my life right now that relates to my business, to my product, to my service that I can then start to talk about online. Um, the second question, should I be posting using my business account or personal account? I like to think, bearing in mind I'm talking about personal branding here, Dom, sliding to hit this message home. Um, business branding is so, so important. I'm not knocking business branding down a peg, but creating content from your personal account, your personal branded account, talking about your mission, your message will contribute and deliver a result 10 times quicker organically compared to running it behind your logo. Um, do you use scheduling software to be able to get your content out to the world? Yes, we do. We use Facebook Creator Studio. It's totally free. You never have to pay for anything that comes down to Facebook or Instagram scheduling ever again. 
Um, it's algorithm friendly, recommend that till the cows come home. Um, and then I also use Buffer for LinkedIn scheduling. Um, everything else I tend to post manually. So YouTube, you can schedule your content on YouTube to go live. Um, and TikTok, again, I just post organically whenever I do it. I mean, the majority of you, I would focus on the core three right now that I mentioned before. LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, where you can. And if you're paying to play, then go to Facebook. That would be where my attention would go. Uh, when is the best time to post? Um, any time of day, believe it or not. Um, posting times, people spend too much time procrastinating. They're going to have to post at 8.30 every single evening. Um, a bit of a newsflash. People are on social media and picking up their phones around about 110, 120 times per day. So it doesn't matter what time that you post, just post and get it out there. Like just whenever you get that spare moment, that little bit of inspiration to go, you know what, I'm going to put something out on LinkedIn right now. Don't think about it. Just go and do it. The consistency of you showing up will build your engagement and your optimization timings, yes. But just to get started, just get your content out there. Um, where do I get my content ideas from? Go and look at the industry news, the stuff that's going on in your world right now. Go and have a look at what your competitors are posting. Go and have a look at YouTube and start typing, typing in your key headlines. And then go back to my content themes and start to align things um, very, very similarly. So if there's a YouTube video that's educating people, think about it. Could you provide something that's better? Could you go and provide something that's actually going to help people further? Uh, if it's a bit of controversy, what are your opinions on that bit of controversy that's going on? Go and create on that. Research. Go and look at what's going on and what other people are talking about. Um, what is my ultimate aim of content? So people think and try to put a ROI on content creation. That is not where you will make your money. Content is purely there to generate attention and build relationships with people. Forget about making money through content. It will not happen. The more you try to push and sell products through content, the more you are going to push people away. The only thing content is there for is the analogy of a fishing rod and trying to cast people into your little group where you're building that no like, and trust and transact effect. Because the more trust that you can build, the more referrals you'll get recommending your business and what you do from a methodology perspective. Success, quite simply, from social media literally comes down to showing up every day. Like, it takes literally, I mean, I did a post the other day and it wound a few people up and I loved it. It took me one minute and 50 seconds to create a bit of content that reached over 35,000 people. A minute and a half, technically. Like, with a clear strategy, talking about you and your business, there's no excuses not to be creating. It is the biggest free organic marketing activity that you'll ever do. And when you do that, you'll start to receive some messages. Now, I specialize in inbound prospect generation. So not having to proactively go out and find business, but generating enough attention, enough awareness where people come to you. It's the way that I've always done things. Like for me, it's the most effective. It makes sales conversations so much easier, but you need to know how to connect, how to communicate with these people online. Now, this is the bit that scares me the most, is that social media is technically built to talk to other people, and yet nobody seems to do it. Like, no one. Like, you will get, I'm assuming, on average, everybody on here has probably at least had three followers on their Instagram account, maybe two to three connection requests come in, but they've most likely ignored them. And actually, you have no idea who could potentially be on the other end of that account. That person literally could be that prospect that changes everything. It could be an investor that could have a little bit of an inkling and buy into what you do in your philosophy that suddenly takes your business from being maybe 150 grand a year to a two to three million pound a year business in six months. Like the opportunity for me that's come from literally speaking to every single person I come in contact with has been massive. I met my business partner that is worth more money than I can ever imagine that saved me the back end of last year from going completely bankrupt. From a message that I just sent introducing myself to him asking what he did on LinkedIn. One simple message completely changed the way that my whole life turned out. And this is why I feel so strongly about this. Like social media is here to network. So let's network. Like let's use it as an opportunity to go out and introduce who we are and what we do to people. And not be afraid if they don't respond. If they don't respond, that's on them. But we have a duty to at least increase our connection basis by at least one. 
because that literally will mean that if you connect with 100 people every single week, the average is around about 10% will turn into leads, 5% will turn into prospects, and 1% will turn into customers. That's the sort of metrics that we're looking at. Here. It's a volume play, but it's the most organic way to be able to grow. And these are the three ways that we do it. We will go and mass connect. Now, we're not connecting with any Tom, Dick, or Harry on LinkedIn. We're not going into people's connections that we think have got our target market in, filtering by second and third degree in the locations that we're in and clicking connect on all of them. We are going in and looking for people that are actively on the program. So if you can actually do this like for one week and let me know how you get on, like people always moan to me that there's no engagement on LinkedIn. It's because they're connecting with people that are not using the platform for what we use it for. So when you go to do a connection request, the biggest tip I can give, especially on LinkedIn on a unique platform, is go and actually have a look in their recent activity before you hit that connect button. Have they liked a post in the last seven days? Have they commented on a post in the last seven days? Heck, have they even shared a post in the last seven days? If they haven't, then don't connect with them because you're not going to be able to get anything out of them. Connect with people that are bought into doing business on social media and you will start to do business on social media. The mass connecting thing, it works if you're connecting with people that use these platforms. When you do that, drop them a comment on their post and then drop them a message introducing yourself. This is not rocket science. Have a clear offer. Remember, go back to step one. Understand what your offer is. Understand what your service is. Understand what your product does. Start to leverage that and move that into starting to find these people who are active on these social media platforms and start having some conversations with them. This is how we start to monetize. Like People look at it and they think it's automated. This is networking. Everything here is all about connecting with people. And the biggest way to be able to grow, and this takes you into thought leadership mode, to take you from someone who's kind of known in your industry to being the person like an Elon Musk who's at the top of the innovation space right now is collaborating with others. Collaborations, I spoke about this bit briefly, more followers, more awareness and more credibility. So I'm not going to go into that in too much detail, but that's what it delivers you. And to be able to collaborate, as people that are running businesses right now, you need to work yourself through and understand how you can get more attention to your accounts, how you can get more attention and more opportunities to deliver your message. And these are some that I've seen recently that have worked really, really well for us. So have a look at who's going live in your industry on LinkedIn right now. Reach out to them and see if you can do some sort of collaboration live together. Who's got podcasts in your niche, in your space that you could reach out to and say, hey, how can I get an interview in your podcast? How can we do some sort of um, thing together to be able to get our traffic talking to each other? Who could you get access and whose email list could you get access to to actually go out and get your message sent to their list? Again, maybe give them a discount or a referral code or an affiliate commission to be able to do it. Like if they can make any sales off the back of their list, it's data that's sitting there. They own it. If you can get some sort of deal that gets you access to a 10,000 person list, again, if they're engaged, if they're bought into what that thought leader is being delivering and they listen to what that person says to buy, there's business sitting there for you and ways to be able to gain attention. Same with LinkedIn, same with podcasts, but YouTube interviews. Who's got YouTube channels in your industry, in your niche that you look at and you go, actually, I could probably deliver a little bit of content for them. Facebook group interviews, again, go and have a look on Facebook. There are industry-related Facebook groups in every single business model that there is out there. What groups that you can go into that have got your target market in that are going to make the owner of the group look good and generate you more business? What networking events are there? We're on one right now. Like what private membership clubs can you, are you in that you could go and leverage and ask for introductions? to ask to be to be put in contact with certain people to be able to give content to their audience think about these things and how you can get these opportunities because again the combination of this will enable you to develop a personal branding strategy that sits very similar to this as it's mine and this is the stuff that i love to really dive deep into as well um, but these are my two starting points so i know that to be able to grow my brand I need to be in places where I haven't really got the ability to control. So I'm looking at PR and public speaking as my two biggest brand building exercises right now. And what happens is 
for any article that's written that I participate in, for any public speaking event that I attend like this, I simply have my phone that sits just here recording everything that I do. Now, that public speaking event enables me to talk to anything from one person all the way up to 500 to 1,000 to 5,000, however big the event is I'm speaking at. But you'll notice the strategy is to drive people into my social channels. Now, what happens when you drive people to your social channels where you are actually creating content that helps them? You automatically start to build the trust. So the PR and the public speaking is the no and the like. The social media is where you build the trust. What happens is as you build the trust, you then need to send them somewhere where you get control. You have no control on your YouTube subscribers, your podcast listeners, your LinkedIn connections, your Facebook friends, your Instagram followers, zero control whatsoever. If that social media shuts down, suddenly goes bust or decides that Zuckerberg or Zuckerberg just decides that he no longer wants it anymore and fancies going on holiday permanently, then you lose access to everything. If that shuts down, your whole following, everything goes with it. So do not leave yourself vulnerable. Take control because your email database is where you can freely communicate, but where you control the data. So think about it. There is a little midpoint here where you need to provide some sort of value which collects data. Very similar to an event like this, or a free PDF, a free video series, a free consultation call, a something which collects the data and puts people to a place where you have control, where you can then have the ability to run your campaigns to them. You mix it with content, but on average, we send around about three emails per week, and we're making on average around about 80p per address that's on our list right now, per month. My activity suddenly, because I know that this process converts, is no longer focused on selling. That happens because the ability that we have within our email campaigns, my focus is adding people into this layer and pushing people onto that list to let the actual automation sequences run. That's how we run this. This email database, this sales communication stuff is all done by booking in calls, letting people know about the offers that we've got, whether that's product or service-based, because I have an e-commerce business as well as I have a service-based business. But it's all about gaining attention and getting as many people to know who I am and what I do as possible. Building a personal brand to finish off was one of the best decisions I ever made. And it's something I believe everybody should do because everybody has one, whether they like it or not. Whether it's activated is normally the question because your personal brand is quite simply your reputation. That's all it is. Whether you want your reputation to be known or remain invisible is completely your choice. But for me, it's the best thing that I ever did. And if you're struggling to understand a way to be able to get there, just look at someone that you admire. Look at someone that you look up to and go, they've done a very good job. And just look at what they did to get there. Go back and watch the beginning because I guarantee that they were shit as well. That's the biggest fear is people think they're going to make a fool of themselves. But guess what? Go back and look at the first ever videos that these big people did. Not just Tony Robbins because of his height, but big people is in terms of personality and level of influence. Everybody's got to start from somewhere. The biggest thing that you've just got to do is commit to starting. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, if you do need anything, um, then again, the best place is to get more value content from me on my Instagram and my YouTube right now. Um, I always finish off with this now because I think it's the thing that hits home the most is the more that people know who you are and what you do, the more opportunity is always going to come your way. Thank you, Chris. I think I can speak for everybody on how valuable that was. You're always so brilliant. Um, so if anybody has any questions, please use the chat and the Q&A box. Um, I just wanted to touch upon, because you broke, spoke about it at the beginning, about scalability. And obviously, um, I'm sure anybody who's heard you speak wants to work with you completely on a one-to-one. -one, but as you said before, there's only one of you. Um, so talk to us a little bit more about what you're doing to scale the business and kind of what is the important factors of that. Yeah, of course. So with my stuff, really, my business is all built off the back of is that I couldn't do all of this on my own. Like I realized that like we are creating at such velocity and volume right now that it was impossible. So I wanted to build a team that could basically look after my content creation and brand building needs. So it was selfishly created. And once it was created and I understood how it worked and the methodology that we did, 
I basically ventured it out. So I have a team now that do all my repurposing. They all do my video editing. They do all my blog writing. They do everything. They use my tone of voice, but they go out there and do it. And what we did was we opened that out to everybody else. So we have services that deliver that. So that, again, needs me to be able to basically wake people up in terms of the way and the powers that this has. So then direct them to the team that are better than me are doing it. I don't know how to edit a video. I'm absolutely useless. Um, that's their job to be able to go out there and do that and create. Uh, and then we also train people on the methodology. So if people want to understand the block, say a deeper level to this and the psychological benefits of the way that this works, how storytelling works, the whole way that I've delivered that presentation there follows the methodology that we break down of confidence, brand building and getting yourself out there. Um, then we have our, our group training program that works on that. It's content mastery. Technically, that's the name of the program. That's what we take people through. I know a couple of people are on it um, that, you've, um, that you've recommended over and saw me speak the last time. So um, I'm sure you could speak to them. I think Nikki Clark's one, I think, from memory. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can speak to them and, and find out a little bit more about it. Um, but feel free to ask me any questions. I always answer. So, yeah. Um, and I guess I, I already know the answer to this, but I wanted to kind of re um, get this into everyone's minds about ideal clients um, because I mean, I'll let you speak, but what or who, what do you think it works best for? Um, it, so we have a criteria of person that we want to work with. And it's a selfish thing because there are some people that are just not ready for it right now. They've got just a little bit of work to do. Um, but the people that have a message that they're trying to deliver people that have a plan and they want to do it. This is a thing that you can't be forced to do it. Like you've got to feel that thing inside you after I've spoken today to go, you know what? I can do that. And I know that what I can do is going to help more and more people as we move, as we move forward and move through. Um, if you don't want to do it and you just want to work with someone where you can just go, Oh, Chris, I can't be asked with this anymore. I'm just going to give it to you. We don't work with people like that. We work with people that are very similar to like the way that I am in terms of we know we've got something to deliver. We know that we can make a change and we know that we're flipping amazing at what we do. They're the people that want because they want to convey that message. We'll then take away the ability to put that everywhere and create the content in a way which can be then scheduled out on the different platforms. But you've got to want to create and we can train that into you. But you've got to have that belief that you are the person that can deliver it. Chris, we've got a question there from Emma, um, one of our attendees. Hi, Chris. How can you use URL links on Instagram? And also, she wants your email again. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. So it's uh, chris at chrisTaylorOnline.com. Um, I'm sure we can put that into the chat. We'll send that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, in terms of URLs, you get one link on Instagram, um, one link that goes into your profile bio. And if you go into your Instagram account, go to edit profile, you'll see it says it in there. It's a website. Now, I use a, an app called Linktree right now. So it gives us the ability to have multiple links um, behind that one link. Um, so if you go and type in Linktree, it basically gives you your bespoke link that you can use. And what I would always say is make sure the links that are attached to your social accounts are data capturing links. So don't just put your generic website on there. Because because at the end of the day, people will look at your website and then they'll come off it. Make your links on your social media free stuff, freebies that you can give away, which in trade, they will give you their name and email address for so you can take control. Like I said, when I was going through that personal branding strategy there, the aim is to get people to my social media accounts. When they hit that social media account, my only job is as quickly as possible, move them to my email database so I'm not vulnerable. That, that's it because my best information goes to the people that are on my email database, nowhere else. It's exclusive VIP information that goes out there. So there's a reason to be on that list. And I then have control of who sees my content and who don't, as long as I meet the spam criteria anyway. I mean, personally, I've really enjoyed the session because I I think one of the things as well, Chris, there's so many different formats of social media out there. And I think some people can sort of be running about a bit like a headless chicken thinking, there's all these, I've got to do something on here, something on there, you know, and I think, you know, the way that you've broken that down and how each one works, I think has been very useful. I'm glad. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. And again, it's not about a sector specific, is it? It's about that individual and their attitude about wanting to, to create and stuff, which was what I was trying to say with the um, ideal client. Chris, can I just 
can you enter the chat? Can you put yes. your email in or drop it in? And we can certainly see from um, the attendees this morning how much everybody's really enjoyed it. Absolutely. Um, and yes, Roger, we do record the webinar, so it will be available to be um, we re watched. It will go on our YouTube and uh, our website as well. Where there's quite a lot of different ones to be found that we've done over the last few months, including Chris's previous one. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so the two together, you've got all the tools that you need, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> really good. Oh, well, thank you so much again, Chris, for coming on. Really appreciate it. It's always wonderful to hear you speak. Um, if no one else has any questions, um, I think we're just about finished with our session now. Um, so as Barbara said, all of our previous webinars are on, available on the website and on our YouTube for um, you to see our previous speakers. Our schedule of webinars is also on the website to see what's coming up. Um, next week we have a um, one of our virtual events teams are coming on to speak about all the kind of ways that you can do virtual events and that what they've been doing, which is basically they're an events business that never did anything virtual until we went into lockdown. Um, and have basically um, returned all their business strategy and a complete um, field and opportunity. So it's really interesting to hear those guys speak. So they're going to be on next week, um, but everything else is on the website as well. So uh, yeah, it was great to see everybody. Chris, if you want to go, um, just interrupting you there. I know you're looking at putting together another sort of a wellness um, webinar. Yeah, absolutely. So unfortunately, because some of our wellness experts have actually gone abroad um, for work, we weren't able to also do this on Wednesday. But when they're all returning to the country, we're going to do this panelist of the experts within um, the wellness field that we've got. So obviously, we have fitness, we have coaches, we have um, beauty aesthetics, doctors, dentists, everything like that. So they're going to kind of talk on a panelist with a Q&A, like what we did with the hospitality webinar, um, and just give people an opportunity to really um, divulge and get some advice from those experts. So that will be coming up once I've that a new date i'll let everybody know so we don't just don't just focus on the business element we focus on the, the mental the wellness of support which i think is what's you know what's so important to us all absolutely and you know if you again jp who's on this um chat has done two wonderful webinars for us all on this subject um, and those are available on the previous recordings as well so definitely go and have a look at those um, so yeah, if there's no more questions, thank you again, everybody. Chris, if you want to stay on, because um, I know we're going to catch up, but thank you, Barbara, again, for introducing this morning, and I will look forward to connecting with everybody next week. Great. Thanks for everyone.